Welcome and good afternoon, and we'd like to call the meeting of the Rutherford County Benefits and Insurance Committee to order. And first, we'd like to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Do we have a motion? All right, Ms. Hickerson, a second. Second from Ms. Boney and others. All right, did anyone have any corrections or additions? If not, everyone in favor, please say aye. aye. Are there any opposed? Thank you very much. Mrs. Street, we will um, let you report on our fi financial condition. Okay, we'll begin with fund 264. <clears throat> for the month of January, our per employee, per member costs for our, our self-funded claims ended at 791 compared to prior year, same time of 889, with a year-to-date average of $887 compared to prior year of 862. When we add our on-site medical clinics to the current month, our per employee per month increases to $837 compared to prior year of 930, with a year-to-date average current of 921 compared to prior year of 896. In addition to the 264 fund report, I wanted to provide you with enrollment history as well. Um, because the enrollment and the nature of the enrollment affects what our overall spend rate is. So I've provided with you a document that looks like this. It has enrollment history at the top. If you'll look at the changes from 2013 to current 2015 as an example, um, you can see prior to that, beginning 2010, 11, and 12, as we phased out the option one, you can see how the numbers begin to tr trickle down uh, between the deductible HRA and copay plan. Um, in 2013, our deductible enrollment was 49.1%. With January 1st, 2015 enrollment, we are at 33.3. The HRA plan has seen continual increase year over year since 2013. In 2013, we were at 25.1. We increased to 32.7 and were at 37.3 in 2015, with that being the highest enrollment for any of the three plan options. What that says is we're doing a good job educating employees. Employees are becoming more engaged in understanding what the program is about um, and making consumer-driven healthcare decisions in terms of what is the best benefit for my premium dollars. Um, staying with the HRA plan, just for comparison purposes, we introduced that plan in 2010, and the enrollment first year was 16.7%. It went from 16.7 to 16.3 the following year, followed by 17.5, 25.1, 32.7, and ending this year at 37.3. So you have just seen constant growth year over year, which is what we had hoped for our employees. The copay plan beginning in 2013 was at 25.8 percent and has increased to 29.4, just a slight increase over 2014, which is 29.1 percent. The copay plan still provides a good option for individuals who want to have that consistent out-of-pocket cost when they go to their physician or their specialist, they know what their costs are going to be that day. So it provides them with a good option as well. But I thought the numbers were interesting. It gives you a five-year review, and I wanted to provide this for the committee just for review um, and understanding. Hopefully next month we will begin discussions about the rates. I'm still waiting on final numbers to be provided to me. Um, we needed to get counts through the Cygnus system for the month of January. They have those now, and they should be forwarding that information to me. So hopefully next month we can begin those discussions. If we can move on to Fund 266. The month of January ended at $397,271 compared to prior year of $278,050. Does anyone have any questions regarding this information regarding our financial condition? You're still studying that document, I can see. Hmm. All right, then, if you don't have any questions, we're going to move on, and we're going to get a report on our workers' comp and OJI from Mr. Good.
Good afternoon. Uh, the report you have in front of you is for the month of January 2015. Under OSHA guidelines, we restart our count every January, so this will be reporting for just one month for the year. As you'll notice there in the first uh, block, you'll see that we had a total of 14 injuries requiring medical attention in the month of January, and you'll see the breakout there of those 14 injuries. Of those 14, seven of them were recordable under OSHA. There were three of them that had restricted days, three, or excuse me, two had lost days, and two all others. When you look at the next page, we have the graph that compares this January to the two previous years as far as what we've had. And uh, you'll see that this year was 14, the previous year, last year was 21, and 2013, 18. The total dollars incurred for the 14 injuries was $25,000. $162. The Board of Education had nine injuries, and their total incurred dollars were $10,562. And the remaining five injuries were with the County General. Again, the incurred dollars there were $14,600. And then the next page of your report, you can see where that breaks out. Uh, for the County General, four of them were with the Sheriff Department, and one with, uh, it's listed as uh, emergency management was actually the fire department is where that's listed at. And then the last page compares the incurred dollars for the year to date. And in 2015, we had $25,000 right now as compared to the two previous years at 52 and 21,000. I was asked to prepare a report for the public safety committee. And your last page of your report is listed here. And what this does, this compares uh, the Rutherford County government statistical data of our injuries as compared to the nation as a whole. And this is put together by the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics. And what we have listed here, we have uh, the previous eight years, 2007 through the present. And the information you see there under lost time days, non-lost time days, recordables, and total lost days, all of that is provided on the end of the year OSHA 300 log, 300A that we submit to OSHA. In addition to that, we also have to provide employees, number of employees, and man hours worked for the year. And this information is obtained through the county finance office. With that, the Labor of U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics has some formulas that they use to compare this data. And we've listed, or I've listed the uh, formulas there below, so you can see how the information is put together. As you go across, the fourth column from the right is the total incident rate. That is Rutherford County government's total uh, incident rate for those years. The Bureau of Labor Statistics, what they do is actually allow for a comparison of occupations across the nation and we are listed under local governments. So when we look at our total incident rate, we can go into the tables and find the incident rate for local governments across the country and for the state of Tennessee. And that's what you'll notice there, it says state incident rate, and that is for the state of Tennessee across the entire state for local governments. So with the formulas, we can actually compare Rutherford County to the state. And that's what you see when you see the total incident rate compared to the state incident rate. And in 2007, you can see where the county was at 3.95 compared to 5.2 for the state. Because the information takes a while to accumulate and put together, there's no information provided for 2014 yet from the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics, and that's why that last column is last number there is blank. But as you go down through there and you can look, you can easily look and see how well we have progressed according to the U.S. Labor Bureau of Statistics and compared to the state and how the state is doing. In addition to that, they also provide two other formulas that we can use. And that actually does a comparison of looking at lost time and severity rate to the injuries. And we can actually compare those and get a, get a feeling for where we are and how we've progressed. And if you look at the severity rate back in 2007, we were at 30.50. And in 
And if we go and look at for 2014, the year we just finished, we're at 8.92. And these formulas provided again, or put into the numbers that we have is a, gives us a standard for being able to compare consistently through all the different years. So this gives you an idea of how the county is progressing as far as our injury and our safety. Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. I just have a couple of questions just for uh, helping me from my memory. If you look on the fourth page, you'll see there where we talk about the Board of Education and the um, some is paid and some is out of reserve. Can you tell me what that is, why there's a difference there, why some was paid from one account and some money came from out of reserve account? What happens is when you take a look at any particular time, you have the total incurred dollars. That's what they think is going to cost for an entire injury. Then you have what's paid because you've actually paid those bills. And the uh, out of reserve numbers is what has been reserved of the inter incurred dollars. So when you subtract what has been paid from the reserved dollars, those other dollars are still in reserve. And that's what you get there. Sometimes we are able to recover money for a certain injury. For example, if you have an automobile accident and somebody is rear-ended, one of our vehicles is rear-ended, then we've incurred uh, losses through employee's injury and the loss of, to the vehicle. Then if we recur, uh, recover those dollars, then that's where you'll see the recovery because we're actually able to put those dollars and recover that and put that back into the county budget. And then on the, on the last column where it talks about cost per claim, is that just an estimate of what you think that type of injury, the cost would be for that? Or that's not the actual dollars that has been submitted saying is what we owe, is it? No, what, what the cost per claim is, is you take the total incurred dollars, which is an estimate on what you think, divided by the number of claims that you have in that, and that gives you an average. So you can sit back and then say, if we have a slip trip and fall, depending on how many we have and what the cost is, we can see where most of our dollars are going to and what an average claim will cost the county. Kind of an estimate rather than what's actually been submitted. That's correct. It's an estimate and usually takes about a year for the incurred dollars to all be filtered through and the claims to be closed. And once the claims get closed, then they are uh, locked in. Marlin. Um, what a great report. I mean, this really, it really helps me being the, probably the newest member of this committee to look at the trend and the history and, yes, sir. and, and more importantly, look at the improvement that's been made. I mean, a million and a half more man hours, a thousand more associates or employees, and then look at the rates, the recordables going down. I mean, everything is good. So yes, sir. doing some good stuff. So thank you. Well, thank you. I just want to let me know that this is not just an individual work. This is a team effort. It takes a lot of people across the county to do this because there's training that has to be done. You've got to have employees that, that are participating in the program to try and keep the rates down. So it's not just an individual thing. It's a lot of people in the county, all across the county, working to, to keep those numbers down. Any other questions? Well, I think that was an excellent report, and thank you, Mr. Marlin, for that recognition. And just as Mr. Good has already said, it takes every department, every employee, every office to participate in on this as, to get these results, and that is just really remarkable. Thank you very much. Okay, let's – next, I think, we have a wellness update from Ms. Kelly Perry, and please come forward. Good afternoon. I'd like to talk to you about the wellness report for January numbers. Um, Patricia and I went to five locations for Wellness on Wheels in January from the 7th to the 23rd. We made contact, one on one contact, with 100 employees. The individual numbers are broken up for you. Um, the eligible population of those five places that we visited was 370. So we had one-on-one -on -one contact with about 27% of the employees. 
Um, Patricia has had eight wellness consults individual. She just started on January 5th, you guys remember, so she's only worked like three weeks uh, on this report, and she's already got eight uh, active she has five active patients, eight wellness visits, so she has jumped in and is doing really well. Um, our current and upcoming activities, on Monday our spring training starts. We have over 125 people signed up right now for that. Uh, we extended the deadline until tomorrow. We would also love to have every school and department have a spring training baseball team. It's just a four week uh, challenge and you don't have to actually play baseball, though you can if you want. Um, but if you would like to sign up, if you don't have nine people and you want to sign up individually, we can stick you on a team. So just call 904-6769, sign up with Ms. Patricia. Our webinar from Life Services for the month of March is on the 17th, and it is about getting your disaster plan together, so your preparedness for any disaster that might come. There are three lawn and landscape classes available at UT Extension Office. They asked for me to let you guys know that they're there, they're free. We just have to register. Their number's 898-7710. There are um, some on the weekends and after hours as well. Um, the special kids race is March 21st. It's on a Saturday. This is their fourth annual race. They have a one mile fun run at seven. There's a 5K portion and a 15K portion. So um, that's a good community event if you're interested in coming to that. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, the next agenda item is uh, a request to bid in fuel Notice on the sheet where it says explanation, there are four items listed there. Safety Consultant Services, COBRA uh, slash FSA vendor, voluntary products, and benefit system solutions. So these are routine kinds of things for the most part. So I think we can take all of these. We'll let Mrs. Uh, Street sort of discuss all of these. And if anybody thinks we need a separate motion for one of these in some, for some particular region, you can let us know. Otherwise, when we get through with this, hopefully we'll be able to just give permission to uh, go ahead and go through the process of uh, putting out our RFPs on this. So Mrs. Street, would you tell us about these four different things that we need to consider uh, requesting permission to bid? Yes, sir, beginning with the safety consultant. Um, Previously, Rutherford County had maintained a full-time safety and training specialist that uh, was part of the risk management team. That position has been vacant since the end of December, and we are evaluating the best process in order to replace the services within that position. One of the things that I would like to do is to actually um, have an RFP go out to look at the possibility of um, outsourcing the safety inspection process. So we would do an RFP for a safety consultant who would be an individual that would actually go out and review all of our schools and buildings that we currently, or that we have previously done internally to ensure that we are meeting OSHA standards and other regulatory requirements. The hope in doing this is that we will be able to lower our overhead and costs associated with the on-site safety inspections that we do annually. If we conduct the RFP and find that it is more cost efficient to bring it back internally, then we'll make that decision and do that at that time. But I think given the opportunity that we're in, that we should vet this out and see what is available to us in the community for other services um, that will be as equally um, good as bet or better and possibly at a lower cost. The second item is for our COBRA FSA vendor. Um, currently, we have COBRA with Infinisource and our flexible spending accounts are with TASC. We would like to issue an RFP for an effective date of 1-1-16 um, for both of these services to be bid. The safety consultant services as well as um, the next voluntary products are, is a January 1st date as well for the effective date of the contract. The voluntary products, which are currently through Allstate, which includes our cancer, critical illness, and accident insurance, we're requesting permission to bid um, these for a contract start date of 1116. 
And our current ADP solution, which is our benefit system solution, our enrollment system that we use as well as our benefits management system, we've had in place through a relationship that employees, which was then bought by ADP, had with Cigna. And in 2007, we became part of the master contract that Cigna had with ADP. We have outgrown the current platform that we are in. Um, it is limited in our ability to continue to add products. It has no support for us in terms of regulatory reporting for ACA. And visually, it, we have outgrown it in terms of the information that we need to provide our employees during the open enrollment process online to aid them in their selection criteria. The new systems are more robust. They are more visually appealing. They are easier to use. And they also provide us with the compliance reporting, which we desperately need. So I am asking for permission to bid our benefit system solution um, so that we can find a better fit for our current needs. And that would be a 1-1-16 contract date as well. OK, you've heard the presentation and sort of a brief description of what these things are. So uh, for your consideration, we can take these individually, or if you want to uh, suggest that we do all of them and get permission just to bid, that mean, doesn't mean we are going to actually do it until we get the bids and review them and decide how they fit within our budget and our whole scheme of things. Mrs. Barnes? Yes, ma'am. Safety training specialist. Outsource the safety inspections, the facility. Right about the safety training components that we send to the buildings and employees each each year? How yes, we'll absorb that internally. Actually, um, if we do the outsource process, Ms. Perrin will take on that responsibility and Thank do you. the training aspects. And then, as well, if we need to do an ad hoc safety inspection, uh, Mr. Good, he is trained and capable of doing that. He can go out and, and do a non-scheduled inspection if that's what we need to do. We would continue to manage the safety training. Yes, internally. it would still be managed through risk management. We would just have this this arm for the um, outsourced safety inspections. Uh, Ms. Hickerson? Um, I have a question down on the ADP system. Are we making sure that that's going to um, be able to feed over into the local gov that has to do you know, the ADP feeds into the local government for payroll, and we need to make sure that in your RFP that that's going to be compatible. We'll capture um, all current utilization of the ADP system and all its functionality and request enhancements. Yeah. Okay, are there other questions of clarification? And does anyone wish to make a motion on the giving us permission to bid these services and products. Mr. Sandby. Uh, to, uh, okay, for all four of these, right? Okay, and Ms. Hickerson second. Now, further discussion from any of you? Okay, Mrs. Harvey. Will these bids come back to the full committee or will you select certain bids to bring back to us? Will we see all the bids or? How, what's the process going to be? Our standard process is we typically will bring back the top two or three, depending on how many bids that we receive. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? If there's not any, then all of you in favor of this motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Now, agenda item number six, we want to talk a bit about the 2017 wellness program. Mrs. Street, you're handling that. Yes, sir. In 2014, we put together a three-year plan for our wellness, um, and we said that we could modify it as necessary. And today I'm coming before you to request modification for the 2017 requirements. I think that um, given the learning curve for our employee population in terms of getting online, completing some of the uh, online requirements related to the HRE process, it's become evident to us that one additional year without any 
ad new additions to the requirements would be beneficial to our employee population and their dependents. Um, we have moved from the Zensi platform to the Cigna platform, which you learned last month as well, that would give them an additional opportunity to utilize the new platform before we add any additional requirements also. So the recommendation is that we replace the previously approved 2017 requirements and we um, adopt the proposed requirements which would duplicate the current 2016 and includes a completed health risk assessment using the Cigna platform between July the 1st and November the 30th, 2016 and complete a biometric screening um, between January the 1st and November the 30th, 2016, and both the employee and spouse participating in the medical plan during 2016 must complete both components of the HRA and the biometric screening in order to avoid the wellness fee, which would begin in January 2017. So if you look up at the top part of the page that we have here, the 2017 item number three which was proposed and previously approved, you're suggesting that we don't do that yet. Is that correct? It is correct that we postpone that, yes, sir. And we replace it with what has been proposed um, under for 2017, which is a duplicate of what we are currently, our current wellness platform or campaign for 2016. Okay, what's the, uh, what your thoughts about this? What's, I see some people smiling, <laughs> Mrs. Barnes. I certainly appreciate that because I think if we can do what we're currently proposing for 16 again in 17 so our employees are more accustomed to that process before we bring on yet another piece of this puzzle I think that will help everyone understand the, the meaning behind it and I, what our intentions are so thank you make a motion now all right all right and second my Mrs. Harvey now further discussion Mrs. Hickerson. I don't know if, if we do this change, which is wonderful and I'm totally for it. Will this shuffle down what we have is 217 with the item number three and make it a 218 or are we going or 2018 or are we going to just drop it? I, well, I, I think that we have time it. to evaluate that and see, you know, let's see what the market does. Let's see what, um, you know, other employer groups are doing, let's evaluate the process, and then if it's still appropriate to adopt it, we can. If we need to modify it, we will make a recommendation uh, next year to do so. All right, any other questions or discussions on that particular item? If not, all of you in favor of modifying the wellness program for 2017, as we have uh, been given information and a motion has been made, please say aye. Aye, any opposed to that? Okay, under other business, I think Mrs. Street has one item. Very quickly, you probably have noticed the last two meetings that we have another face up here with us, and I wanted to provide you with the explanation of that. Uh, Ms. Anderson has been the secretary of the insurance committee meeting. She reported for 20 years, and um, although she has enjoyed her tenure greatly, um, <laughs> Ms. Dodd has expressed interest in assuming that role and so we are making that transition and we appreciate the work that Ms. Anderson has done and we look forward to working with Ms. Dodd in this new capacity. All right, does anyone else have any business they want to bring before the, the committee today? All right, so we have a regular scheduled meeting next month, Mrs. Uh, Street? Yes, sir, I believe it's around the 19th or 20th. Okay, so there will be a regular monthly meeting. There will be a regular monthly, monthly meeting for the next several months. Several months, all right. All right, thank you very much for your participation and your attendance. We are adjourned.